you've got your watercolor paint and you dilute it with water and you seem to be doing everything that you should but your washes are still not turning out the way you want them to uh, your smooth washers turn out to be patchy you get these ugly looking blooms or vice versa you want to create a wash with a little bit of diversity and color but it turns out to be all washed out and very flat looking so whatever your issue is you have come to the right place because today i will show you three main techniques on how to create absolutely wonderful watercolor washes and underpaintings and I will really really dissect them just to make sure that from now on you don't have the issues that you have been struggling up until now and make sure to watch the whole thing because I will also show you how to integrate these techniques into your paintings and what subject matters would suit these washes and underpainting styles. For those of you that are new here, hi, I'm Leila and welcome to my art studio. Now this first technique that I'm about to show you, then like what you may have seen before or have been taught before, this wash is actually performed on dry paper. One of the main thing with this technique is to have your paper just a little bit upright, not too vertical. I have mine at about maybe, I don't know, 15 degrees or so, um, I'd say maximum 20. Another important thing is to prepare enough paint wash. You can make it as intense as you'd like or as watery as you'd like, but you need to make sure that you mix enough of it. Because if you make a break in this process to mix some more paint because you're running out, some of the paint might dry out and you will end up having streaks all over your piece of paper. Make sure to take into consideration the size of your artwork and the intensity of the wash. So this is the mix of cerulean and French ultramarine. Here we go. You want to make sure that your paint brush has quite a bit of paint, so it, you know something that can hold paint quite well. And you want to just apply a really large amount of paint. Now you can see that because we have our work a little bit upright, the paint starts to go down because this is what gravity commands. You want to work quickly because you don't want for this line here to dry. If it will, you will end up having a line through your wash. So this is the best technique for the flattest wash if you just want a flat color. You can make a gradient as well. So I'm premixing two, three colors and introducing them. I will show you a little bit later. By the way, if you also would like to see some long follow along type of videos where I really show how to draw and paint something from the beginning till the end, pop over to my Patreon page because I do a lot of tutorials over there of that type. We do requests as well and critiques of the artworks and lots and lots of other stuff that you might find very helpful if you are learning how to draw and paint or even if you just like to you know, relax and have that stress-free time that's involved with creativity. You also want to make sure that you're going from side to side, so going directly over the masking tape. Here we can absorb the extra paint, not too much, you don't want to leave a completely sort of a blank paper. And you see there's a little faint line here. Now you know how I said don't stop while you're working on this because this is what you will get. This is where I actually swapped the position of the camera so it just took me maybe half a minute and already there you can see a little bit of a darker line. So that's what I mean. Make sure you pre-mix everything. If I would have left it for another minute, I would have had a really sharp, very strong line. And when you're painting, make sure that your paintbrush has more paint than you normally would have on it. With this technique, it is crucial to keep your paper in the same angle that we held it in while we were painting, while we were applying this wash. The reason for that is the top layers would be, you know, lines that we've applied with the brush will be drying 
and while you're still working on this area here it's still damp so if we turn it the other way around the paint will run back up or even if we put it flat and it'll start to pull and form sort of cauliflower type of things uh, I mean if this is what you want then this is what you do but if you want just a perfectly flat wash then you don't move your paper around in such way and because we were working on dry paper this dries quite quickly but you do need to premix quite a bit of paint beforehand to make sure that you've got yourself covered okay but what if you want to create a gradient with this technique it is also possible and your gradient will be just as beautifully smooth as your basic color application all you need to do is premix all the colors that you will be using in the gradient just like we did with the first blue wash again we're starting on the dry paper and working quickly from side to side Here I'm already using the red. If you want more of the dramatic change, then you might need to absorb a little bit of this. Again, you have to be very, very quick. And now again, I'm going to change into yellow. And now again, I want a little bit more of a dramatic change, so I will just absorb a little bit of this orange mix. And because I want to fade out this area, I'm just going to go over with a dry brush and just really, really lighten this up. And here you go. Now, if you want to go from a really strong, intense color to a very, very faint, very soft color, you can do a very similar thing, just making sure that you're adding water as you go along rather than paint. And this is the best way to create these perfect flat washes. Remember, the larger your artwork, the larger the brushes, and more paint you have to premix. But now you might wonder, what are these good for? These washes will make perfect underwashes for any kind of a landscape or anything where you have one flat color going on the background or a flat color with a color gradient. So things like sky, sunsets, and so on. This technique can be used in one layer or layered, where you can apply another layer of the same color or a different color in a flat wash. It's perfect for larger areas or almost like cut out areas of color. Just remember, to make sure if you're doing the layering technique that the previous layer is 100% dry. I told you it will be easy. So let's recap. Remember for this flat wet on dry technique, make sure that your paper is 20 degrees upright. Make sure to premix your colors before you start painting. Make sure to not stop and use a lot of paint so that you create that little bead of paint on your page. And you're probably very excited because you can see how easy, right? I told you it'll be easy. You just need to know a few little tips to really, really ace it. But don't go away yet, even though I know you're probably eager to try this because I still have to show you two more really cool painting techniques. Are you ready for the second technique? Now this technique will involve a spray bottle. So make sure you have that on hand. Um, you can always get them from like grocery stores or even reuse an old um, spray bottle from some kind of a substance. Just make sure you wash it out really, really well because you don't want any kind of grease or detergent particles in that bottle. Now this second technique is not your traditional wash but it is perfect as an underpainting for landscape, 
florals and so many other things. For this one, you need to make sure that your paper is lying flat on the table. You can still use your board, tape your paper, do anything that you're used to doing with your art. Just make sure that it is flat. This technique is also performed on dry paper. Here we go. Make sure to load up your brush with quite a bit of paint first and then apply on your paper in strategic areas. In strategic areas. Next you want to grab your spray bottle and see the magic happen. You can always go in with a brush and add or take away paint. This technique can also be performed with one color or multiple colors and I will show you what you can achieve with those variations. This is what it looks like when it's dry. This is a very special paint and it separates into two different colors, blue and brown and where those two pigments are mixed up it appears like a dark muddy green. If you would like to know more about the granulating effects like this I do have a full, very in-depth video where I go into all sorts of different effects that you can create with granulation, so make sure to watch that if you're interested. But this work is still not over. I am going to add another layer on this, but just like before, make sure that this one is perfectly dry. This is a different color, but also green. You can see how incredibly beautiful and really free this wash is. I don't even know if you can call it a wash, but it's definitely an underpainting layer. And where can you use it? Of course, using it for foliage, florals. You can see how I'm turning these little blobs into a quirky little tree. And you can see how these crazy splashes of color can be turned into a floral piece with the use of some ink. All you need to do with something like this is add few suggestive details and the painting is pretty much already painted for you. And in this instance with using different colors and just one layer wash you can see how with the use of ink and a dip pen you have this full really interesting looking artwork that has both very controlled line but also a very free paint application. So you can see how it can be a backdrop or you can even complete your whole painting like this. So what do you think of the second technique? Do you think you will use this? Or perhaps you've used something similar to this before? Let me know in the comments. Okay, now this third technique is going to be a wash performed on a wet surface. So for this specific a wash and underpainting technique, uh, I'm going to apply water onto the piece of paper, specifically on the area where I am trying to create that wash. Now you want your paper quite moist, but you don't want to have a whole bunch of water sitting on the surface. So it should be a little bit shiny, but not uh, super, super wet. For this technique, I also have my paper on a slight elevation angle. You don't have to have it for this technique. You could work with it fine uh, if your paper is flat, but I still prefer to have a little bit of the direction because that gives me a little bit more predictability of the direction that the paint will be flowing in. The beauty of this technique is that you will be able to create multicolored wash without the specific gradient. So this would be perfect for painting sky, grass, sea, water of any kind. Uh, you will see in a second. Keep in mind that because you already have water on the paper, your color will be coming out even lighter. So if we compare this technique to the first technique on the dry paper that I was showing you, over there you will get a much more intense color than you would here. And you see, you can go and try and apply it smoothly, but what would happen is that because paper starts to buckle, because you already have water on it, you will not get the super perfectly smooth wash like you would with the first technique. But this technique gives you a little bit more time and 
it is perfect for those really soft variations of color because you have water sitting on the surface it gives you a little bit more time to play with colors you can blend them together without the worry of leaving too many streaks and things like that just make sure to stop doing that and moving your paint around as soon as you see that the areas are starting to dry up see i can add a little bit more of the blue right there uh, whereas with the other techniques you would not want to do that because you will start the blooming process instantly this technique is a little bit more forgiving in this sort of a sense and that's why i guess it's probably the most popular one that you would see now what is this technique good for landscapes any kind of underpainting where you require different shades and different uh, color variations it would work well for water sky like what i'm doing here and anything especially landscape wise because this technique requires dampness of the paper you can create other situations where this can be useful like for example here you can see that i'm tilting my board in the opposite direction exactly where i want the paint to flow and i'm creating these blobs uh, which will be turned into trees a little bit later on you can play with color variations and all sorts of other cool things while it is damp so the only things to really look out for in this technique this is a 300 gsm watercolor paper so it's quite thick but you don't really want to be using it with a very thin watercolor paper because you will your buckling effect will be very very strong and so your paint might start pulling up in certain areas so that's why what you do want to do is to make sure that you're working on a nice thick watercolor paper and you can see how this kind of a wash can turn into a very interesting and very quick painting as well and you see how you don't actually have to have too much watercolor experience so this is the third technique let me know guys which technique you prefer and which one perhaps you use the most i hope you guys have enjoyed this video let me know in the comments what you think of those techniques are there other techniques that you'd like me to show you like this step by step fully deconstructed as always i want to say a big big thank you to my wonderful wonderful patrons you guys are amazing and also check out these videos i think you might find this granulation video quite useful as well if you're learning how to use watercolor so don't go away just yet if you want to learn some more insights and make sure you watch some of these videos that are popping up on your screen now as well and thank you so much for painting with me and i'll see you soon in the next video